in soccer and what made you decide to play soccer? I started when I was seven years old. Um, it was more of a peer pressure opportunity at school play. Um, up until then I wasn't particularly interested in playing soccer. Um, I got the bug and um, just, you know, my dad, you know, did so much for me as a kid and um, he took me out every day and just knocked the ball about with me. We learned to play soccer in the old way, hitting the ball against the wall. And um, it's a little bit difficult now doing it with stucco walls. But uh, we managed to, you know, improve every day and you know, just fell along the game. What are your best soccer memories as a child and what teams did you play for? The teams I, I played for, I, I was quite a loyal guy. I played for one club called Deeside Boys Club and they were a middle team. They weren't the best team, they weren't the worst team. Um, I think it included me as a, as a, a player. You, know, you were tested all the time. You didn't have many easy games. Um, you know, I had to work hard, help my teammates, and you know, it made me a better player. I wasn't the greatest player when I first started, but I think that experience helped a good bit. Um, and, you know, and when we did win, we won the odd, odd tournament, the odd you know, league or whatever, and, and they made it a bit more special than you know, you know, being at a club where you win every single game and it just becomes a habit. Um, I think it just meant a little bit more at that point. When did you know you were going to be a professional soccer player? Well, as I say, it's quite funny. When Sir Alec Ferguson started to show up at youth games, watching me play, he used to show up in his silver Mercedes. Um, and he used to get goosebumps when I knew he was coming to watch me play. And, and that was at the age of 13. Um, and then you know, shortly after that, he made a phone call to my, my parents and signed the schoolboy form. And I had three years left at school that you know, I knew that I was going to be a professional soccer player, so the three years was probably the slowest three years of my life. Who were the biggest influences on your soccer career and why? I think I've touched on them both. My dad, <clears throat> you know, he, he was fantastic. Um, he helped me so much. He didn't interfere with any coaches. He, he took me to practice, he watched practice, he took me to games, he watched games. He never once tried to coach me, he never once tried to criticize the coach. Um, he just let me, you know, learn, you know, from the coach and himself. Um, and you know, obviously, Sir Alec Ferguson was a, a huge influence on my career. Um, from the age of 13, you know, up until I was 19, you know, uh, he signed me as a schoolboy. He played me in the reserves at 14. He played me in the first team at 17. Um, he actually tried to sign me at Manchester United, but Aberdeen at that point wouldn't let me go. But you know, I just think he's just as a person. You knew where you stood with them. Um, you know the coaching side of things. It wasn't so much the coaching; it was more the the little pointers he gave you, the little little things to me, the little edge to make you a better player. Um, but you know he just had so much belief in myself, and even in the, in the, the professional first team, you know it's, it's high level. You're playing in front of big crowds. I would make mistakes, and he would you know he'd let me make mistakes, and we'd maybe lose a game because of me. Um, but you know I learned you know pretty quickly the mistakes and. You know, I just think that's why he's, you know, Alec Ferguson's been so successful. He's, all the young players he's had at clubs, he's, he's relied on them, he's had belief in them. You know, and even when you go through a bad spell, he's always, he's always been there. And, you know, I think I've taken that on to coaching myself. What honours did you achieve as a professional soccer player? Um, I was, you know, fortunate to, um, at Aberdeen when I started my career. I played in, I think it was two cup, four cup finals and won two of them. And then I went to Rangers and had a real successful time. We won six Premier League championships. I won three Scottish Cups, three League Cups. And I was fortunate enough to play in the UEFA Champions League. And, you know, we were one goal away um, from reaching the, the UEFA Champions League final. And we, we tied the game against Marseille. And if we'd won that game, we'd have played in the final. And it just so happened that year that Marseille beat AC Milan in the final. And, you know, sometimes you think you know, it could have been a little bit different if if we manage not to, to concede a goal. But you know, overall it's you know, I think in Scotland, Scottish football I'm probably one of the guys that won the most, you know, domestic honours. How long were you a professional soccer player and what are your best memories? I was a professional soccer player from the age of sixteen, I left school at sixteen, um, and I played through until I was thirty one but an injury at Leeds United. But I think I was just fortunate enough to, to play in a very you know, play for my own local team, Aberdeen. Um, I used to go and watch him as a, as a kid. Um, and to, to play for your own team, your own hometown team, is a bit like a, a boyhood dream. And I managed to fulfill that. 
I went to Glasgow Rangers and, you know, as I said, we played in the Champions League. We won first at Everton with us to win the game. We played against some with some of the best players in the world, even Paul Gascoigne, Brian Loudrop. Um, I was also fortunate enough that, you know, I played for Scotland at every level representing the country. Um, but I, I just think, you know, having the, the opportunity to become a professional soccer player and, and lasting as long as I did is, you know, you can never take that away. Um, there were some ups and downs. But you know, I look back and it's it's amazing that you can actually get paid for for a hobby. What made you decide to go into coaching? Um, I think you know, coaching is obviously the next step. It's it's not as good as playing soccer, but it's the next best thing. Um, you know, and I think you know the coaches and managers I've played for, you know, they've all got different techniques, different ideas, and and to be honest, up until the age of 27, I had no real desire to get into coaching. Um, but I got, began to get uh, some injuries and started to do some coaching licenses and, and got hooked on the coaching. Um, and, and I've been fortunate that there's a lot of guys, good guys, good coaches that I've managed to um, you know, pull from their experience, add a little bit of things myself. But you know, as I say, it's, it doesn't replace playing, but it's a, it's a close second. Where have you coached? I coached at Leeds United. They were in the Premiership. I coached in their, their youth teams there. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to coach guys like you know, Jonathan Woodgate who wanted to play for Real Madrid and Paul Robinson who wanted to play for England. So, you know, I, I started my coaching career there and then went back to Scotland to be a head coach of two professional teams at Elgin City and Montrose. Um, and, you know, it was a huge experience. I was the youngest head coach in the UK, um, I think I was 32 at the time, um, which doesn't seem to be that young. Um, but at that point, it was, it was a huge honour to have that, um, and you know, had some successful times there. And obviously, came to Sereno, and you know, I've been here for five years now, and it's just it's a great club to be at. Um, you know, the, the people I've met have been been pretty good, and you know, the experiences have been good. And you know, we just aim to obviously, hopefully, I'll be here at Sereno for a long time to come. What do you think are the most important aspects in coaching the youth soccer players? For me, it's, you know, as I said, I've spoken, I've you know, been fortunate enough to, to work with some great coaches, and some great coaches here in Arizona as well. Um, my, my thing is, is that, you know, I don't tend to overcoach. I think that's a big fault in the modern day soccer, is overcoaching kids. Um, you know, the kids need to, you know, make mistakes and correct the mistakes, you know, instead of predetermining the mistakes. But to, you learn more uh, from making mistakes. You've got to allow the kids to make mistakes, and then you can point them out. But the most important thing for me is it's got to be fun. You've got to the kids, no matter what level it is, if it's kids, if it's professional, if it's college. If you don't enjoy playing soccer, you're not going to improve. Um, and I think we've got to have a, a good environment, make it happy for the kids, fun. Um, you know, obviously, it's still got to be a bit structured. Um, but you know, I think the overcoaching piece is, is pretty. It's a big thing that I believe in that the kids should be allowed to express themselves a little bit more. What are your visions for Serena? Serena is, you know, it's, it's been around for a long, long time. It's one of the leading clubs. And, you know, when Arizona's mentioned, um, anywhere I've been in the U.S., Serena's always the, the club that gets mentioned. Um, and we need to, to keep on the success. And, you know, not so much the, you know, winning trophies here, competitions there. It's more the case of keep producing players, get um, and I think you know, we've done a fantastic job in that. Um, you know, I feel that you know, we, we need to you know, give the customers value for money, uh, which I think we are, we are doing that. Um, but I think if we can just give a nice, friendly environment, make people want to be here, um, you know, as a club we're growing, we're expanding um, you know, throughout the valley. Um, and I think overall, if we can just keep going the way we're going, and, you know, like now we've got you know, some, some girls in the, the national team um, at the moment, which is a huge achievement, um, particularly not from Arizona, you know, that doesn't happen too often. But most of the club, most of the players that come out to national team level, if it's in the squads or in the, you know, the teams, I think most of them all come from Serena. What makes Serena a top level club? I think Serena, with the, the history Serena's got, um, it's been going for 30 years, it's been successful. Um, and it's probably been the most consistent 
club for success and producing players. Um, you know, again, we need to keep the focus on you know developing the players, you know, creating them into the best player they can be, fulfil their potential, make them good human beings as well. Um, and we always get compliments from colleges and national teams how our, our players behave and act. Um, and I think it's a compliment to the coaching staff. I think we, we take a lot of care in the kids. Um, at the end of the day, it's about the kids. If, if there's no kids in the club, there's no, there's no club. Um, but I, I do feel that we, as a club, you know, we like to, to change certain things that, that go on in the Valley. Um, and you know, we aim to develop these players. We make them you know, realise their full potential and you know, hopefully create some more stars. What has been your favorite memories during your time at Serena Soccer Club? Uh, I think for me in, in, in the five years I've been here, I think it's seeing players, you know, want better things. You know, we had a player called Danny Coos who played in the, in the, the national, obviously a place for in the MLS, played in the national under 20s. You know, you've got kids like Sidney LeRoux, you've got, you know, players that go to the top level colleges. Um, and, and I think that's the most pleasing thing. It's okay. It's great to to win state championships and to win regionals and what have you. But I think the ultimate goal for us as a club and the most pleasing factor is, you know, seeing these players develop and go on to bigger and better things. And you know, it means more to me than, than anything. You know, I was fortunate enough in my first year that one of the teams I had got to the national final, and it was great to see the faces of the players. You know, how excited they were and what have you. But at the end of the day, it's that was one one year, um, and I think those players have all gone on to bigger and better things, like a lot of the players at this club do. And if we keep, you know, working with the kids and creating a good environment, I think that will continue to go for a long, long time, and, and hopefully we can get the coaches to get more satisfaction from you know seeing these players develop and, and come into some good human beings.